years, seen a lot of deterioration of the city of Cleveland and a lot of buildings were torn down. So you ended up with all these voids along Detroit Avenue. We use the term fabric, and generally it's like the, the scale, the density, those have things to do with, with fabric. This project was a great opportunity to infill that back in along Detroit Avenue. And so we wanted to be able to sort of emulate again the fabric of the street uh, with, a, with such a big building. Garrett Morgan High School was actually originally conceived as two high schools and the idea of trying to make each one have its own identity was important and that sort of resulted in, in how the plan laid itself out and arranged itself on the site. The project site is about five acres. Um, it's not a big site for a big school. You know, it's a complicated site, high profile site. Uh, it's right on the bank of the lake. We were always thinking that the views would be of the lake but it turns out the best views are of the central part of downtown Cleveland. Now the site itself, you know, had, had old, the old Max Hayes, and prior to that actually was residential. So there was a, there was a probably 40 residential houses on Tillman and on Detroit. We never knew what the schools were going to be actually, um, like if it's gonna be a school of science or a school of business or whatever. Even though we didn't know which schools were going to be in there, if it was going to be new tech, there would be some similarities uh, from whichever school, I guess, moved in. So all those kinds of things started poking at the, at the design and, and influencing what we ended up doing. It's also a long, linear site, so that made the building stretch out along several blocks of the city of Cleveland. So we actually took the, the largest piece, which is the academic wing, um, and broke that into three blocks and then took each one and kinked it a little bit, as if it were multiple buildings sitting along that street. The glass facing Detroit Avenue was to see into the building, uh, almost like looking into a restaurant or something. You could, you could look into the student dining and lend activity to the street to support kind of a knitting back together of the community. So there was a desire to kind of get those functions kind of up along Detroit, where people from Detroit could look into the building and see that kind of activity happening. This project was a great opportunity to infill that back in. A little bit about the floor plan then and the spaces that are in there. I think generally what happens is that we have what we initially call a community side and an academic side. It started out as a, a new tech type high school so it always had that STEM arrangement to it, uh, that focus. And of course, the way this laid out eventually was that it worked out perfectly. That little separated chunk that we call the community part was absolutely separated except for that little bridge that comes across. They become a hub for the community because they have these spaces that can be used by the community like the gym, the student dining. So I think it was important to have that kind of community hub uh, and have that be successful. Um, if we talk about the academic side then, again, it was two high schools, so they had identical programs. We worked with some of the principals of the potential occupants of the school so that we could get their program from them directly. And they have, instead of 900 square foot classrooms, they have 1,800 square foot classrooms. So let's put dividable walls in these spaces so that they could go back to 900 square foot classrooms if they needed to, or they could open up to the large ones. Of course, we have the collaboration areas in the middle of the building, there's one on each floor. So again, those provide a breakout space for students during the day. And that was an important thing. It kind of gets back to this sort of student-centered approach. We also have a, a essentially a, a STEM lab on each floor. And then the media center is a shared space. So the media center is shared by both the, the schools and it's at the end and it connects so you can get directly from each of the schools right into it. So that can act as a, a unifier for the student population. They can gather there and have events. Of course that one is kind of the big space that opens up into the big views, has the big collaborative stair in there. Setting up the, the plazas that support pedestrian uh, friendly environments along Detroit. We knew that was going to be important. 
There was a bus stop that we knew was going to be important at 45th. A lot of the kids took public transportation and they would they ended up there. And then, of course, at the main entry. And then the one at 49th has the faceted shape stair. So those, those spaces were really important. A lot of times we'll put a stage uh, in the gym or adjacent to the gym so they can use it as a performance kind of a space. Um, but again, with conversations with the community was like, well, we've got theaters that are down on Detroit. Instead of recreating this at the school, then it's, a, it's again, it becomes a collaboration with the community that the kids could go down and, and use those spaces which are designed for that kind of a thing. And so we didn't put one in, the, in this building. It's, the gym is a gym. The old Max Hayes had all of its parking right on Detroit Avenue. And for its time, that was probably appropriate. That's what you did back then. You, you accommodated the car. <laughs> and I think we found out that that didn't accommodate pedestrians. And the parking then flips to the rear of the building, to the north side of the building, away from Detroit, which forces everybody to park there and then walk around to the front. And the councilman that was involved says, no, I don't want that to happen. So that was resulted in the sort of the solution where we kind of split the building, fractured the building in two, and put a bridge over the, on the second floor, which allows everybody to kind of circulate right underneath that into the front door. Again, it goes back to creating a good urban environment um, with a tight fabric to Detroit. We have to figure out what the design problem is, and that's part of doing that. All that engagement helps us define that problem, because if we don't do it right, then the solution, no matter how good it is, isn't really a good solution because it's not addressing the true problems. On this project, um, there, was, there were definitely a lot of stakeholders involved in the project that were very interested in, in seeing it succeed. You know, obviously there's CMSD, the main stakeholder. There's the councilman, councilman zone for the ward, uh, very supportive of the project. And continuing on with the city governance, the landmark district, there was the local development corporation uh, Detroit Shoreway Community Development Organization. There was Planning Commission to jump back to the city. <laughs> um, just a host of stakeholders that, that had eyes on this project and we had to, we went through all those uh, organizations as part of the review process. Um, there was a large uh, stakeholder meeting early on in the project. So we had a series of charrettes, looked at different alternatives. And there was a pretty, pretty clear consensus after the meeting. It turned out to be like a hybrid of, of, I think, two or three of the site plans. We actually had a series of goals and then we had different solutions. We probably had 10 different solutions. And so it was a process of even delineating which goals were important to them so that we, did, we weren't driving the goals that were important for them. For us, it's, it, that is what design is and that is bringing all those kind of different uh, forces together and trying to and trying to you know come up with a, a good solution. Yeah, I think personally for me, doing educational design work yeah. is about the next generation. When we walk away from a building at the end, we want the community to say that's that was we were a part of that. It sets generations of kids up for success by a good foundation. In many cases, a new school in a in a in a neighborhood really does have an impact on the neighborhood even though it may not they may not have kids that go there but the fact that it's there i think it gives a lot of value to the neighborhoods and i think we've realized that it successfully achieved its goal of accommodating the two schools you know one on each level and i think it's a very flexible school that cmsd can be proud of and and move into and serve them well for a long time in the future again that's kind of what we hope for right if everybody walks away from that going, this, is, this was good, this was a good process, this was a good product, everybody's happy, then it's, it's a success.